Hello everyone, it is Professor Oleander again, making a uh, another video because apparently something happened when I was recording the uh, previous video about two thirds of the way the microphone cut out. I don't know what happened. It didn't get muted in OBS. I'm using um, voice meter as a, as a sort of mixer and I'm guessing that <clears throat> for whatever reason it just decided to work uh, even after a computer restart it wasn't wasn't quite working so I've made some adjustments and um, it according to my readout on OBS it's working now so anyway we'll kind of pick up with this little improv tune thing um, so where I was was just getting some stuff ready and I've went and bought some things I bought something big that's over yonder that we're not going to talk about just yet that'll be for a different video because I'm not needing it right now but uh, what I ended up going and doing was I purchased all these beautiful cars here these skeleton cars and uh, these uh, rack cars <clears throat> these are all going to go to Walker and then among the things that I purchased was, I don't want to give too much away, one of them is this little guy right here, this little tank engine. Um, trying to get him cold, actually it decided it wanted to coal. Uh, I tried for about 10 minutes to get this thing lined up in just the right place to um, get it cold up and now it's apparently decided that it wants to do that so what we're gonna do first is um, I want to what do I want to do first I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and do the little bit of switching here in the yard that needs to be done with uh, these guys and then I'll just I'll go over some of the stuff that I was talking about in in the last video that got cut off which I think I was talking about mods and the developers are very supportive of mods they're supportive of the modding community they are trying to limit is probably the wrong word uh, they want to have a little bit of control over and even control is the wrong word they're trying to be careful of mods that get made at this point and the reason being is because the game is still in its infancy it's in early access things are going to change um, the modders have actually gone pretty deep in terms of what they've been able to uh, tap into game engine wise and I mean literally I mean, there is a mod available now where you can actually put a uh, a mining cart from Minecraft into the game with its own train consist. Um, <clears throat> so that's one of the things. Somebody's added a diesel. There's some other things that are out there. Um, I mean, they can go deep. One of the things that I saw yesterday was somebody is making for all intents and purposes an, an external dispatcher for the game and I th think the one there's two being made one of them is web-based the other one is an uh, as an app it's software and uh, it's very bare bones at the moment but it, it runs in a separate window so you can actually dispatch without having to have the game open one of the other ones that I saw that's being worked on currently is a it is a an app that runs through Discord for servers so you can manage your game server through Discord dispatching trains and stuff like that which is actually something that I was looking at because if I do go ahead, which it does look like I'm going to, and make this um, 
the save that I've been working on for a multiplayer server eventually once we get all the way to Andrews uh, I wanted to integrate something like that <clears throat> I wasn't sure how I was gonna do it but where you can have dispatchers on duty and then have uh, what was it you, you could basically it'd be a form where you could make your track warrants and whatnot so that was the idea but it looks like there's some people that are working on uh, a lot of different things there's more mods that I've heard talked about and there's several locomotives that I know that are being worked on and a lot of other quality of life stuff that's being worked on but the devs are kind of they're not trying to stifle it but they're like let us work on the core features of the game before you completely morph the game into something else because that's kind of the worry is that you can <clears throat> the modders especially the ones that have a lot of experience <clears throat> can outstrip the pace at which the developers are actually developing the game so they're in some cases a couple of them are actually ahead of where the game currently is and for various reasons this development team is actually fairly small I think it's only like three people maybe at the most and uh, when you compare it to something like uh, Century of Steam which I don't know how many guys that they have working on it I think it's probably in the neighborhood of about um, I don't know there's probably at least a half a dozen maybe and I could be wrong I know Heiss is working on it, which originally I think he was just going to be the sound guy and he was sort of the figurehead of the company, but now, according to the videos, he's actually been working on some of the programming. He's been doing some of the little intricate stuff, but I know that there there is a handful of guys. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I think this game started out being one thing as sort of a passion project and I think Century of Steam started out as this is what they they wanted to go one direction Railroader wanted to go in a different direction they both have their merits I think this game is um, I think this game's interesting I mean I obviously have a little time in it matter of fact let me look and see how many hours I have in this thing I have 190 hours in this game so far <laughs> And to put this into perspective, I liked Starfield, regardless of what anybody else thought of Starfield. Because I've, I've seen that game go from, like, overwhelmingly positive reviews to, I think it's uh, mostly negative now or something like that. Which it's, it depends on what you want out of the game. Where is Starfield? There is Starfield. I've got 133 hours in Starfield. And I played that game almost constant for like two or three weeks. But like I said, it depends on what you want out of a game. You know what I mean? Let's see. For this guy, I'm just going to set him here out of the way on the main. This yard's a mess right now because I've got all these cars. That's something i got to work on at some point. I have to work this evening, so... I'm not going to do it today. I'm actually, I'm not going to spend too much time in game right now. But I'm actually feeling like doing something. I'm not, I'm not so tired that I don't feel like messing with anything. I figured we would do some switching in this video. You know, actually playing the game instead of me just rambling on for an hour about whatever. So... Let's see, all this has to go over to Appalachia, Laba 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 Hardwoods. And this will be a good time for me to at least demonstrate how I kick. Because that's normally how I end up switching out this, uh, this place, with the exception of the tank cars. They're a little tricky. I know that there's cars over there that need to be picked up too. So I'll send him on his way. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna snake him out of the yard, though. 
probably, hopefully I'm not making a mistake by doing this. Looks like I've got that switch turned the right way. This is always the fun part. It's trying to remember which way you've got your switches turned so that way you don't derail something. Okay, I, I did have that right. Alright. So now that that's done. That is one of the things I like about this game is that I can reach way over there. I can actually... I can just about hit the 382. About right there. I can actually select that guy if I wanted to. That's one of the things I like about this game. So, air's tied in. Let's see what we got lined over here so we don't go down the house track. So I, I had said it before, I've organized this yard. The, the two that are, the two tracks that are currently here, these are the coal tracks. This is, uh, uh, let's see, this is eastbound, westbound, empty, overflow. This is where I'm kind of assembling locals for at the time being. So let's skip out of that. What's, what whistle am I using for this guy? Oh yeah, the central of Georgia Fox 6. All right, get him moving. And throw that one, that one's lined. Throw this one. This one, and yeah, we're good. So, I said it in the last video. This is this is going to be the second passenger train that's going to run. As soon as I get over here to the end of the yard, we're going to um, we're probably going to go ahead and turn the passenger train around because I had to do some things. Twelve mile an hour. That's good. We'll find out in a minute. I could go ahead and just give him AI orders. No matter of fact, I think I'm going to just keep him at 15. Let's just see. Is there a fusey? Ah, I didn't line that switch. Okay, so I'm gonna let him do his thing. And we're gonna go and Turn the passenger train around. Which where is fourteen oh one? When I was putting this mammoth train together for uh, Walker, it uh, it required some power, so I had to bring this engine up here to uh, to assist. I, I, I've ordered more and more engines, but it took took quite a bit to get that train up here. And there's another engine that I'm not going to talk about just yet. As I said earlier, that's going to end up being in another video. Probably the next video, because I haven't had time to record any switching. That'll be next day in-game. I have spent a metric butt ton yes that is an actual unit of money today i don't even remember how much it is it's several tens of thousands uh, let's see that's all lined this one is not lined all right i'm gonna send him toward silva and i need to go here and Line these switches back for Silva. Because I've got my passenger train sitting here. I had to run around this train. This is one of the reasons why this train is as long as it is. Um, and I had talked about the script that I'm running, the mod anyway. You use a few Z if you don't want it to go back and forth. One of the things I do need to do is set the marker lights. And I will... When I do the tutorial series, I'll talk about markers and class lights and and that sort of thing. Generally speaking, just 
as a little bit of an overview, you want your green to be on the rear, facing the rearward, if it's end of train. You would put green to the side if, like, this was a section. Then, of course, you'd turn it off if it's not in the middle. And then the red on the side, uh, it can indicate the... Like, if you have a train that's broken up into sections and this was the last section, you could put the, re you could put the uh, red on the side as that's the end of that sectional train. But we're going to put that on the end there. And like I said, I'll go over that a little bit more because it, the, the rules, they're, this, they're almost the same railroad to railroad. Some of them do it a little differently. Um, there is a rule book that operates very similar to how this line would have ran. And it calls for white flags and some other things. But then there's other rule books that are just, they do it just a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and find you in. And then let's go over and with you. Let's see. First of all, let me go over here and see what's left. So we got one there that can go, and there's probably three over here. Nope, there's four. Okay, so this won't be too terribly difficult. All right, let's take 19, and I need to take you over. That switch should be lined. It is not. Now it is. All right, let's go ahead. I think I mentioned in the last video that I'm using the Run 8 setup for the um, brakes and all. I think the only thing that I changed between Run 8 and this one is I swapped the independent and the train. And the reason being, the, the default setup, if you're not careful, you'll hit the wrong one. And with the Run 8 setup, they're far enough apart where you can, you don't hit one accidentally. So which one's first out? We'll get the tank car last then. Yeah. Actually, let's do the tank car first. Well, no, this is this is the Mikado. I was gonna say if if I'm still using the ten wheeler, I need to do need to do it backwards. The problem with the the ten wheeler was when I was trying to pull cars out of here, it was really struggling to get up this grade, which is yeah, that's three almost four percent. That's it's a bit of a struggle. Almost. This needs just a little bit of work because there's a lot of dead zone. So like if I start right there, I'm almost a third of the way down. I'm trying to figure out. But like, you really have to start at the top of the screen. Because if you push V down here, you lose a lot of the whistle. But it's just one of those things where you, you kind of got to get used to it. All right. This is all downhill, too. I think this is two. Yeah, two tenths. Two tenths of a percent. One of the things that I did last night while I was... I had some downtime at work was I was working on... Um, horsepower equivalencies for locomotives and it needs to be refined a little bit because I was trying to figure out when we start getting into grades how to figure out how many locomotives you need which if you've got the tonnage rating chart you can figure it up but what I need to do is um, I converted it over to horsepower for the purpose of um, 
figuring up horsepower per ton. So I'm trying to figure up like a standard. Like if you need to know how many you need to carry over a hill, and I'm basing everything off of 20 miles per hour because that's how much. I've talked about this briefly, and I don't want to get too far into the weeds on it right now because it's one of those things where I need to go back and make sure that what I'm telling you is correct. Um, steam locomotives make all of their power from a standstill. With the caveat that they need to move in order to make power. So I think I had said in another video that A steam locomotive can pull more than it can start, and a diesel locomotive can start more than it can pull. And it just has to do with um, the way that they put power down. Because a diesel locomotive is variable horsepower, constant torque, and a steam locomotive is constant horsepower and variable torque. I think that's right. Or did I get that backwards? Or maybe it is the other way around. Anyway, just don't take it to heart just yet. The reason why I say steam locomotives are constant horsepower is because this is your horsepower. This big old vessel right there. That's where your horsepower comes from. It makes all of its horsepower as it is sitting right now. The steam is what gives you your power. Your tractive effort torque comes from this part right down here and it takes movement to do it so the adage that a steam locomotive can pull more than it can start has to do with you don't do work until this moves a diesel is already doing its work through the engine through rpms and uh, or, uh, transfer of power and all that stuff so it can start a bigger train where it lacks is the horsepower curve kind of goes up 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 and then it starts to fall off well the horsepower curve goes up 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 and it stops and then you you reach a point where you've peaked out and horsepower is dependent on speed and you'll hit a certain speed then you can't go any faster and again without sitting down and doing more so that I can make sure that I'm telling you correctly, don't take that to heart. That's sort of a rough overview. Me having worked all night and I've only had about four hours of sleep, still kind of bleary eyed because I haven't had enough caffeine yet. That's sort of a general overview of it. But what I was getting at is I don't even remember what I was getting at. I have to convert, because these are measured in tractive effort, because that's what's actually putting it down to the wheels, which, technically speaking, so are diesels. I have to take the tractive effort that is here and put it into a factor that we can, we can use. So I went with horsepower, so I converted the tractive effort into horsepower, which I believe, if I remember correctly, is you take the tractive effort, you divide it by 550, and then you use feet per second to give you horsepower. And what that ends up doing is that gives you a horsepower rating for your tractive effort and then if you go by the rule of thumb that I've used in run eight, which is one HPT will go over a 1% grade at 10 miles per hour. You can extrapolate that out and say, if you want to go over, say in this game, a 4% grade at 20 miles an hour, you need to have an HPT of about eight, which is why I'm saying my math is probably not 100% on that. I haven't had a chance to do any testing with it. But 
because 8 HPT sounds high, but it could be could be correct. I mean, if you look at, um, I th think in run 8, when you send a train over Cajon Pass, if you want to go at speed, you need to have somewhere around 3 to 4 HTP. And it's not... My rule of thumb is not perfect. It may take more, it may take less, but that's generally what was accepted. And I looked around to try and figure out a sort of benchmark for building up trains in Run 8. And what I kept running across was what I told you, which was 1 HPT will go over 1% grade at roughly 10 miles per hour. And if you want to go over 1% at 20 miles per hour, you need 2 HPT. So that's how that scales out. It could be completely wrong. I know that there are probably people that are watching this saying you're talking out of your ass. You have no idea what you're saying. Probably. I don't care. I'm just working out some way to get a benchmark for how much you need to do. Now you can use the the sheet, the tonnage rating chart and then extrapolate that out. So I think, let me look. Now these, these weights are counting the locomotive too. So just remember that. So like say I'm using a C55 right now and a C55 over a 4% grade will take 628 tons. And I do not have, I do not have the weight for it right now. That's that many tons, you know, minus its weight, and that tells you exactly how much trailing tonnage it can take. So, if you had a train that was, say, oh, God, let me pull it back out again. Let's say, what is that, 628 times 2. So, let's say you had a train that was 1,250 tons. You would need two C-55s to go over it. And that's that's all fine, well, and good. I just wanted to do something that was more closer to HPT and give each locomotive a horsepower rating. And then you just you take your, your the ton of your train and then you divide it out. And then that's just, it's another way of doing it is what I'm getting at. And this one, you can actually have a table that's not quite as the, the chart that I just looked at is pretty big and it requires you to hunt for it but if you use like my rule of thumb and say well you've got a 4% grade and you want to go um, you want to go over it at 20 miles per hour this is this is the horsepower that you need to put on it bare minimum is what I'm getting at. I don't know what that chart is based off of speed. I think that was the reason why I decided to do it. Because it's like, what does that mean? Does that mean, is that bare minimum that it can take? Or like if I want to, let's say you want to run a timetable, if you wanted to go over a, tr over a hill at a certain speed, you need to have X number of engines on it. And I think that was the reason why. Last night was kind of a blur. I didn't have any sleep before I went to work and yeah anyway switching so we are going to this would be classified as fly switching so that one goes on the outside track that one goes on the outside track this one goes on that one that one that one this goes on the other one and then standard board Okay, so these two right here. So let's take the brake off. I'm going to get it moving. Oops, helps if I go the right direction. And as soon as it starts to move, I'm going to go ahead and shift click on the coupler, get some speed going, go ahead and select this guy, and we're going to stop. That's six miles an hour ought to be enough. Make sure I got that switch lined. 
Alright, so there's the first set. We want to get that as close to that bumper as possible because there's another car that needs to go in there. So now that that's been set, we can go ahead and start chasing with the uh, air build up. I think there's just one. There's there two. There's two. There's three. And that's the only three, so we can go ahead and start chasing here. We don't want to get going too fast. We just we want to keep it going. And the reason why I can shift click on this without it breaking is we're just going to keep keep moving. Let's get it up to about six. What? Did I not hit the switch? I'm bad about doing that where I'll I'll hit one switch and then I won't I won't go back and look again. And sometimes I swear like the game I'll actually click on a switch and the game won't register it. That should be close enough. Yeah, I can get another car in there with and have it register. I swore I clicked on it. Anyway. We still got another opportunity to do fly switching, so it's not it's not that big of an issue. Why is that sliding? I think that's the first time I've seen wheels slide before. And that could have been just an LOD thing. Alright, come on back. Let's see, that's these three. Now normally I will not kick more than three cars at one time. I do need to throw that switch. And that's sort of... I, I don't even remember if that's something that I picked up from uh, an actual rule that the railroads had, but it seems like three cars sticks out in my mind as far as the maximum that they would would switch like this. Because particularly for loads, because if you if you get too carried away, you don't have enough brakes to stop it. So now I am gonna remember to click the switch. Actually I'm almost positive I, I know what I did. I I know exactly what I did. I clicked it. I clicked the wrong switch. I hit that switch and I meant to hit this switch. It was what it was. So I, that was my goof. I lined this switch to go down the main line when I meant to hit this one. So basically, we will wait for this switch to clear, or this set of, this uh, cut here to clear the switch. We'll throw it, and then there is a flat grade here. So what we will do, we'll slow down ever so slightly about four and we'll just kick that and then just let it go and then basically we're done this string is gonna run out probably about the time that it hits the the dock there and this one will just it should have enough momentum to go all the way down and couple I'm gonna sit here with it just to make sure that's going on we're going to go over here and we're going to kind of wait it hasn't happened yet where I've had to go back in here and move them again okay so even even if these cars couple it's not going to be the end of the world that one should have enough momentum. Yeah. There you go. So there's the first one. This is how they used to run hump yards too. So you you'd basically have uh, just enough of a slope to let it roll down. You'd have a car that's got a handbrake set on it that would be your anchor car. You gonna make it? You're gonna make it. And then just let him coast right on down to a couple. Copulation is complete, and we can get the heck out of Dodge. Let's 
go over here and get this tank car moved. We've got, it's always the middle car. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you put the brand new car forward. It, the game decides what car it's going to pull off of. And it never fails. It's always one that's in the middle. I have, I have swapped these cars around before and it just does not care. I know people are going to be complaining you don't have the headlight on. Well, guess what? It's daylight hours. The headlight's optional. If you don't believe me, that is an actual rule. It is in the CFR Part 49 230 something. I can't remember the exact rule. But you are not required to have a headlight on during daylight hours. On a steam locomotive. Diesels, they got to run. But on a steam locomotive during daylight hours, you are not required, unless it is in your rule book, to have a headlight operational. So there's your FRA moment for the day. So this job is actually fairly quick and painless. This one tends to be a little bit of a pain in the butt just because it's it's down the hill. You have to be careful on the approach, especially if you have a heavy train. And um, see, one of the other things that I can do while I'm thinking about it is to go over and uh, get the cars that are at the coal mine. And. How far do you gotta go? Mm, I'm tempted. Screw it. We'll we'll do some more fly switching here because we're here. In this, I'll I'll reorder it again and I'll see if it makes any difference. Because my my experience with this has been it doesn't matter if you uh, put them in the right order or not. It's just gonna pick whichever car. It's almost random. So in terms of switching, I got this to finish. Dillsboro needs to be turned. And then Whittier, which Whittier is fairly easy. Matter of fact, I probably need to go ahead and do Whittier now. So that way those cars can load. A lot of you are probably wondering why I pulled this car out. It's loaded. This car is the one that they're pulling off of. So what I'm going to do is something you should never do. Is I'm going to kick a loaded tank car, which is a no-no. There, there are certain things that even I won't do. And let's see. You straight, you that way. Yeah, that's that'll work. Forward. Let me get some speed on you so that way you're out of the way. Because this is a little bit of an uphill. You up. Air charge. For that switch. good enough for you let's see this is the partial load so I want to send him down first so need to throw this switch back now how big is this grade it's still flat so same same rule we don't want to kick it any faster than we want a couple so roughly four miles per hour Alright. 
went too far with that one because I was, wasn't paying attention. This car is loaded, so we're going to go ahead and kick him down. He'll probably make it. This one we don't want to get going too fast because that's a 4% grade coming out of there. So something about like that. And I meant to stop. We don't want him getting too far out of whack. Matter of fact, I don't even think I'm going to let him go all the way down the grade. I'm probably going to get him clear of the foul and stop him. It's about right there. Because by the time he stops, he's going to be... Well, maybe he'll stop him a little bit quicker. Yay! I did a thing. All right, so we want to... Let's go ahead and grab the empty. Play. grab this guy first which I wish I hadn't kicked him as far as I did but you know things and I am going down the right switch this time so that is one of the things that this game got so right and that is it allows you to kick cars like the controls are just set up just so that you can do fly switching like that and it's smooth and right about there slam it to make sure it takes and if it don't slam it again Off we go. I like these Mikados, but they just do not hold a whole lot of water. I didn't realize that one had gotten as low as it is. I've got enough I've got enough water to make it back into to Bryson, but just so. A lot of people will say that's one of the downsides of steam locomotives in this game is the water consumption is really high. But it's they're fine tuning it, so we used five gallons there. Yeah, I can. I'm just barely gonna make it. So we won't use any more than we have to. Luckily, there's a water plug just at, just right inside the yard limits. And if I need to, I'll just bring 34 down here and grab it. Not the end of the world. I didn't, I didn't, I thought I put more water in it than I did. Because it seemed like this engine just got serviced not long ago. But that is one of the things that I've noticed about these Mikados is that they, they do use a fair amount of water because they don't carry that much. Smack that. Oops, hit the wrong one. That one, that one, and that one. Let's not get too carried away here. Okay, so that's that's manageable. 368 I think when we add that that car which I think I said this in the other video it would be nice if when you hover over it it tells you what the tonnage for the car is that way you're not constantly having to go back and look for it or at least well it wouldn't even make any difference if it's stenciled on the side of the car because if it's loaded it's 
I guess you could put the loaded weight on there too, like they would be more apt to have in IRL. We got 44. We can, we can do this. Famous last words. All I got to do is make it to the Y, and luckily it's the switch is like right there, and the plug is like right there. I think we can do it. That's so as fast as we need to go, anyway. <clears throat> and really, I, all I got to do is just kick the brakes off of this one. I'm going to try it anyway. There we go. Do that. Take that off. And we're just going to cut. Cut these. And that should... Ah, crap. Anyway, I'll come back and get it. I don't want to waste any more water. I thought I counted three. I counted four. But it's all right. Tis all right. Let's set one. That's probably gonna take a second one. Set two. And we might need a third. Nah, two's enough. And there you go. So aside from kicking one car too many, which I probably could have went and got it, but I didn't want to chance it. So let's see. We need to line for the plug, which is right char. So I need to set that straight. And reverse. Yeah. Get him up to... 12 mile an hour and he should coast right in. You make sure that the switch is lined correctly. Yeah. Okay. Let me see how much water you got left. 11 gallons. He's coasting at 9. There is no grade here. Yeah, it's flat. So it's going to take him a minute. I suppose what I could do is just tell the tell the AI just bring him in at like five. Might have screwed myself on that one. I did. It was now he's out of water. All right. That was my bad. I should have just left it be. Should have just left it be. Anyway, I'll rescue him here in a minute. All right. So. Yeah, 34 is there. I'll just go and get him. Not a big thing. I need to move 34 over anyway. So. What's next? I guess we could go ahead and couple up the passenger train and get him ready to run do that helps when you're organized that switch is right Which I don't think I've ever showed it, and I might show it now because I don't need to do any dispatching. I don't think if you're not on the ground, you don't get an appreciation for how big these models actually are. Because this is a fairly decent sized engine. So let me. I mean, let me stand right there. That's how big this engine is. You don't get an appreciation for that when you're when you're when you have nothing to scale it to. 
So, I mean, I'm assuming that this model is roughly six foot tall. So, I mean, just look at the size of the drivers. That's just how big these things are. All right, so enough of that. Do go back up here. Put him back in the station so that way I know where he is. I really wish they would fix this map. station dispatcher office is here there we go I don't think I need to set anything where did I say I needed to go and switch Whittier so we'll clear this train to there's also a bug and I don't know that it's a bug like if you have switches set like sometimes these guys will default back like that one right there it'll default back to straight up and down like even this one right here I can just click right there and you don't hear the click and that's something that I noticed let's see we're gonna clear him to Thomas Valley just go ahead and get all the doodads and then this train should be Fairly decently loaded right now. Actually not, but we're going to pretend it is. We want to... Interesting. Somehow or another, my... My script broke. So either there was an update today that I didn't see, which let me go back and look. There wasn't. So I have to figure out what's going on with that because I have been running the passenger script and it's been fine. That's interesting. That's not working right now. So I'm not going to run it just yet. Um, let's go switch out Whittier and then we will call this one done. Actually, let me check something. Yeah, the... No, they're not. I need to finish doing that. There's the cars for Dillsboro. So I've still got these two cars here that need to go to Dillsboro. And I think it's over here. I feel like I set some cars off this morning that needed to be switched. What's in the yard? Ah, oh, there they are. Or no. I feel like I got some cars that were destined for Dillsboro. Or I guess I already did them. I think I did. Yeah, I did them. That was these three right here. I already swatched, swapped them. Okay, so that's done. Let's go to Whittier. And we'll do the Dosi -si do. See how many logs we've got. We still got three cars that are unloading. And the. Sawmill has 39 logs, so it's at 43%. So if I turn, if I do one more turn on this, it'll just about be full. All right. So let's go over here and see what's in the box. All this except for that one. Let's see, we got one. Yeah, more than it can handle right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just twelve. The rest of them gotta go over here. I need my map for a second because I think the sawmill will handle. I think it'll handle eleven. Nope, handles fourteen. There's 12 cards there, seven on each one. So let's do this one real quick. Let's see, we want to set that. See, that was another one where, I... oh, because I know why. I don't have it selected. All right, there we go. Break loose from that. Let's check and see how much water it's got. Oh, it's got plenty. 
Yeah, I'm literally surprised that the 19 ran out of water because it seems like I had, I had just filled it up. But I, how much water does that thing hold? 55. Maybe I filled it up the other day and I'd done a bunch of stuff with it, which is apparently the case, but I feel like I had literally just filled the thing up and it ran out, but whatever. It's not like I don't have engines there that can go and get it. One of the other things that I need to show at some point is that the collision models are very weird for some of these cars. So like, I was over in, uh, where was I? I was over in um, Silva and I had a tank car that I was trying to run by a box car. I'd actually went to kick it and it was about this close, maybe just a skosh closer. And the tank car was, like, not physically hitting the model of the boxcar, and it kept damaging the car. And I'll have to, I need to do some experimenting to find out, but it seems like the, the collision model on tank cars is way different from uh, other things, from the other cars that are in-game. Oops. I hate it when there's only like one car on the back end of it. This was this came out of the second second set of cars that came from the interchange. I had to run that freight twice. There. Really wish that they would get these bounding boxes fixed. sawmill cars there let's see that needs to go forward well that's moving I can go ahead and go over here and set this up so we're going to snake it in here, that one back. Oh, me trying to hurry up and this, get this done because I get I need to try and get another hour or two of sleep before I go to work tonight. And I got one or two other things that I need to do before I go to bed. So, give her beans. How much we got left over here? There's 25. You're fine. He, he can do one more turn before I need to fill him up. I, I generally know how much these guys use. They can usually do about three turns 
before I have to put fuel in them. I'm waiting on that. I'm just going to go up here and look at something. Okay, so those cars are loaded and looks like these cars are loaded too. And what about the ones that are up here? I'm willing to bet these are already loaded too. Okay, so the pulpwood cars are ready to go. That's a good sign. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just seeing what's ready. And that's part of the problem is that these uh these cars don't load they don't unload as quick as they load so i i hate to turn them because you know there's no reason to and i think I'm pretty sure these we had said that these turnouts were good for 25 mile an hour before that you start having to worry about issues Let's go ahead and start stopping. Seven cars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that flat car is the last. That's all I can fit in the switchback, plus that's all that'll fit in the siding. I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but I'm actually getting ready to get a new graphics card because this one is um, this one's getting some age on it and it's it's getting to the point where if I try and run newer games it's suffering so I'm getting a uh, I decided to get I almost got a 4060 but I, I went with a 3060 Ti because they were it was relatively cheap Com comparatively speaking, I actually I'm paying less for the 3060 Ti than I am for my 1070 that I'm using right now. Um, I don't know if that's because Nvidia has figured out that they can't they can only gouge so much before people just won't pay it, or if the so-called chip shortage is over or whatever that is. But uh, I think part of it has to do with they're facing a lot more competition from AMD, which is a good thing. So I'm curious to see if this game runs any better. Because I'm currently running on high. And it does relatively well. It sucks that they had to cap the tree density, but it is what it is. It is what it is they'll get this game optimized. Plus, with Century of Steam coming out, I think that um, the performance is going to be fairly similar. I think my, 10, my 1070 can handle it. But, like, I think I had mentioned that I went ahead and bought Hogwarts Legacy, which I didn't know it at the time. Had I known it, I probably wouldn't have bought it. That game was made by the same group that made the one of the Arkham games and that game was notorious for optimization and performance issues and I almost refunded Hogwarts Legacy until I found a mod that actually goes in and fixes like all the problems like it was almost unplayable I got through like the first tutorial phase and then you get to Hogwarts and you go out of your common room and it's like lag city is like one or two frames per second. And I was like, this is garbage. And come to find out it was just because the same team that worked on the Arkham series, they just, they did not optimize the game worth crap. So that sucks. Let's see, where's the break? There's the break. Grab one more string. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> but so far, since I've been able to play it, I actually, I like it. It is a little bit on the repetitive side, but um, I think they did a decent job with it. I think, I believe it's it's probably the best. I haven't really played Harry Potter games except for the, um, I played the Lego ones, which I thought were really good. Most of the Lego games that I've played have been good. But um, of the Harry Potter games that I know of, it uh, it has been certainly the best looking. But I think they they captured the spirit of it, of not just the books, but the uh, the movies themselves. Because I've read the books a couple times, and I always find more stuff in there that I missed the first time. It's kind of like The Hitchhiker's Guide. I've read that book, I don't know. Well, books. I've read that series like four times now. Probably more than that. And each time I read through it, I find more and more stuff that I didn't catch the first time. One more move. I almost set the time scale to 0.5. I was looking through Discord earlier today, and one of the devs, I think it was Connor, put, uh, there is a way to go below 1 to 1, and I almost put it at 0.5, and I was like, no, nah, let me, let me try this. Let me see if I can get some more stuff done, because I think I've mentioned in the last video that it takes eight hours. I mean, it is legit. It takes me a good eight to ten hours worth of work to get all my switching done for a day and um that's why i don't make as more videos than i do okay so there we go that is done whittier's changed dillsborough's done bryson's done the only thing that's left is to pick up coal cars and i will do that off camera so that is the end of this video and uh i will see you next time